Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about regular expressions, continuing our several videos on regular expressions. And we're going to be talking about redos, uh, regular expression denial of service, a pretty common problem in regular expressions. And if you've worked in JavaScript, you've seen this word thrown around a lot because uh, it seems like every single NPM project has this vulnerability in scared quotes. Um, but we're going to talk through what it is, give you a very simple example, and then I'm going to show you some tools to fix this problem, uh, as well as I'm going to show you a real-world example where this actually affected me and was something that I ran into in the wild and was a, was a problem I had to fix. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. All right, so yes, we're talking about regular expressions. I'm going to be doing all my examples in Python today, and specifically we're going to be using Python 3.11 because it introduces some new things which give you some tools to combat redos. All right, so let's open up 3.11. Uh, I'm gonna be writing some regular expressions here and I'm gonna show you some of what, or some of how they work and then explain to you why they're problematic. Uh, so we're gonna start by importing RE. We're gonna make a pretty simple regular expression. Uh, it's going to start with, let's start with hello. Uh, it's gonna match either A or runs of B and as many of those as possible. And for those of you that already know the answer, anytime you kind of see this plus plus pattern, you probably have a problem there. Uh, let's also say that this ends with world. Uh, and so that will be our regular expression. If we take this regular expression and we match it on hello and then ABB, ABB, something like this, you'll see that it does match this successfully. And if we leave out the end here, it fails to match it. And it did both of those relatively quickly. And so you might, you know, write this regular expression, write a test for your positive and negative cases, check it in and not think about it ever again. Uh, but then someone might come along and make a string that's particularly bad for this regular expression. Um, for instance, a very long run of Bs and then a failure to match at the end will cause this regular expression to take a very, very long time to complete. Um, I think even if you put it at like 100, you can see the, yeah, even even at 100 characters, this lags for an extremely long time before succeeding or failing. Uh, it should fail in this case. Oh my, my fans are spinning up. It's, it's, <laughs> anyway, so, somewhere around, I don't know, 50-ish, you can see the, the significant lag here. And the reason for this and what's happening here is the regular expression engine is trying this uh, repeated character here and then trying to repeat it again and each permutation and combination of that, but then it sees that there's not a space after it and so it fails. So then what it does is it backtracks, it tries it again, but with without the same path as before. So it's trying each different combination of uh, you know, repeated Bs and repeated repeated Bs. And there's quite a few, even for 50 characters here. This is gonna take an extremely long time to try and find that there's a failure there. Um, if there's a success, I think it actually completes a little bit sooner, but it's mostly for failures. Oh, nope, it's not even, oh, right, that's a, that's still a failure. I'm gonna put the world here. Yeah, for successes, it's gonna be a little bit faster. There are other ways to make successes also fail with like negative lookaheads that have the same problem, but anyway. So that's the problem here. Basically, regular expressions can cause catastrophic backtracking, and this leads to a denial of service, because you can imagine a remote web server that uses a regex for validation or something like that, uh, would spin forever trying trying to validate some input that's particularly crafted to attack this regex. Okay, cool. So we sort of showed the problem. I want to show you one example where I ran into this in the wild, and then we'll talk about ways to solve this problem. Um, there are also like many other similar patterns to this. I'm not going to go over the common ones here, but uh, there are tools that can help you find this, and they do a much better job explaining how those work than I would possibly do that. But it definitely repeat repeats are ones where you'll see something like this. Okay, so here's one where I ran into this in the wild. This was in my text editor, uh, where a particular set of RST caused it to spin forever because of a regex here. Um, and you'll notice here that they have uh, this same repeat repeat problem here. So this is word characters repeated and then uh, a zero to many repeat after it, followed by you know some some required non-caption group afterwards, so something it can fail on. 
Uh, and so this tried every single combination of all of these characters. And then, you know, in my case, I gave up on it because there was no way I was going to wait the the literal years it would have taken for this to um, reach an end here. This was an example of the particular string that it tried to match. This was a documentation file from C Python. So not not anything that looks terribly malicious like yeah sure 100 b's in a row looks a little malicious for this but this is just a random string uh and my text editor ground to a halt uh and yeah again it's this repeat repeat problem and so there's uh, this is one of the common cases you can have redos if you've worked in javascript as i said before lots of libraries have this vulnerability and in most cases it doesn't super it isn't really a problem like as long as your your things that you're matching aren't user generated content you probably don't care about whether your regexes are going to infinitely backtrack unless it's you know <laughs> actually performance critical in a piece of code that that could potentially have these these uh, nasty inputs all right but anyway here's one that i found in the wild now i want to talk about how you can solve these problems and what it comes down to is avoiding backtracking because that's the whole problem in the first place and there are a few tools to do this uh these are usually referred to as atomic groups and in Python 3.11, these are introduced. Uh, an atomic group does not backtrack. And so if we take our uh, regex that we had before, uh, we can wrap this repeat here in an atomic group. An atomic group is question mark, uh, right angle bracket. And so what this says is try this as a single run and don't ever backtrack on this. And if we try the same regex now, you'll see that Oh, yeah, right, the positive match, and we have our negative match. You'll see that it happens uh, basically instantly. Um, oh, we have to show that the positive match still works as well. Yeah. So you'll see it happens basically instantly, and that's because this uh, this atomic group never will backtrack. So this, this B plus, it just runs until it runs out of Bs, and then it's never going to backtrack. Um, there are ways to uh, oh, the other part of this so this is atomic groups there's also possessive quantifiers uh, possessive quantifiers are ways to say how much a repeat should happen uh, or how much backtracking a repeat should happen uh, so you can also express this same b plus in an atomic group as b plus uh, plus that is the uh, oh i did oh i re i clobbered it i meant to do it assign it to reg2 but whatever it's fine uh, you can also represent this as B++. This is just a shorthand for wrapping this in an atomic group. Uh, and what B++ does is it, again, says this will just find the full run of Bs and never backtrack. And so this works the same way as, uh, as the atomic group here. And that's just a shorthand. There are also possessive quantifiers, this, this possessive plus for all the other repeats. So B star, B question mark, B curly bracket, and uh, those all can be used with this possessive quantifier plus, meaning that it doesn't backtrack on those repeats there. Uh, now, these are all new in Python 3.11, and not every regular expression language has these. Uh, I want to say that JavaScript does not. So you're, you're, I would say you're sort of out of luck there, but there are ways to do this even if you don't have these features. Uh, for instance, if you need to target Python 3.8, or 3.10, or anything older than, than a, a year or two ago. And what you can do is you can simulate these by using look-aheads and look-behinds. And it's a little bit gross. Um, I, once wrote <laughs> I once wrote a tool that compiled a particular, uh, much more featureful regex language into Python's not-so-featureful regex language, and this was one of the things that I implemented. Um, you can write this same regular expression with the possessive quantifier. Actually, let's do it with the atomic group because it's a little bit more one-to-one -one in explaining how it works. So we take this atomic group. We don't have. We assume we don't have the atomic group feature. Uh, we can write something similar with a look-ahead and a named expression. So let's just call this uh, part one. And our expression here. So we have our look ahead with our named expression. So it, it runs this once to look ahead. And then after the look ahead, we can uh, look back at a named capture by doing this. So <laughs> a little bit complicated. Yeah, I have to copy from my notes. Um, but 
this is a way to write an atomic group if you don't have the atomic groups feature. So look ahead. The reason this is uh, a look ahead is it consumes it once and it doesn't actually move the regex stuff ahead. The, the, the processing engine, the stuff, uh, the technical term. Um, I did a video on look ahead, so I'll try and remember to link that in the description, but that's basically what this does here. This is a named capture, meaning you can refer to this name elsewhere in your regular expression, either um, in the result or in a, in, a, in a look back. This is also kind of an advanced feature, so not necessarily all engines will have this either. There are other ways to do this with, with different features as well. I just know how to do with this one. Um, and so this allows you to do that same thing. Uh, if you do this match, you'll see that it happens instantly and you know, just to show you that it works. Uh, and so technically a, um, an atomic group can become this garbage. <laughs> but anyway, those are some tools you can use to combat regular expression denial of service as well as how it works and kind of a silly, simple example of it. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.